Colonel Jim Hodgson has a chest brimming with decorations for service in New Guinea and New Britain. But the Australian Service Medal presented today means the most to him. To me it brings back fond memories of a very difficult period that I had during the 1965-1966. The award recognises service in peacekeeping operations between 1945 and 1975. As a former UN military observer in the Kashmir dispute between India and Pakistan, Colonel Hodgson was a key member of the team that helped bring both armies together. But his service in India came to an end when his jeep hit an anti-tank mine, leaving him with serious injuries, including blindness. For Colonel Hodgson, the Australian Service Medal is no ordinary memento. Well, this one's uh, special to me because, amongst other things, as a, a young officer, a second lieutenant, Swaran Singh Sandhu, of the 8th Sikh Light Infantry Battalion, gave his life for me and saved me on the 21st of May 1965. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News. At their last meeting in the Ericsson Cup in Adelaide, City came away with the points after a 2-1 victory. But prior to that defeat, it had been all Newcastle in head-to-head -head clashes this season. The Breakers haven't lost to Adelaide City in Newcastle and the home side will be looking to repeat its Johnny Walker Cup semi-final victory come Monday night. In the Super League, Adamstown is at home on Sunday, while Round 3 in the local league kicked off this afternoon. It continues tomorrow with the Roosters taking on the Wolves and concludes on Monday. There's also plenty of action at the Motodrome with a meeting tomorrow night followed by another on Sunday. $47,000 will be on offer over two nights, with the sprint cars featuring Saturday and the street stock sedans on Sunday. Cash is also on offer at East Maitland's Hub of the Hunter Lawn Bowls Invitational Singles, which began today. Several Australian reps, including defending title holder Ian Taylor, are contesting the event, with the final to be played on Monday. And in cricket, two Newcastle-born players scooped the pool at the State Cricket Awards. Greg Matthews was named Player of the Year, while speedster Anthony Stewart picked up the bowling award. Local radio station New FM's usual programming has gone out the window this weekend. It's a case of anything goes for a good cause. 292777 is the request-a-thon number. If you want to get a song on, you can make it anything you like, as long as you have enough of a pledge to go along with it. And the public came alive to the challenge to help sick children at the John Hunter Children's Hospital. By mid-morning on the first day of the four-day request-a-thon, the tally was already mounting. So all up, we have uh, well and truly over $10,000 at half past ten. The way it works is people wanting to request a song, any song, to be played on New FM, call the request hotline and pledge a donation to have their song played. The money will then be used to buy new medical equipment for the hospital. That number again, 292 Laura Sapistein, NBN News. A groin injury restricted Andrew Johns at training yesterday, but not badly enough to keep him out of the game, which will see him up against Saints half Noel Goldthorpe. Goldthorpe returns to the Dragons' first grade lineup after his stint with the Mariners and is part of a formidable backline. A point noted by Mal Reilly, who is keen to exploit other areas. They've, they've got some inexperience in the forwards, um, but they've got a very quality, good quality backline. It's now overseen by David Waite, who was instrumental in the Knights' founding years till 1994 when he left the club in controversial circumstances. Both coaches have played down that element influencing the game.
In ten encounters, both sides have won five apiece. The Knights struggling to overcome the Saints in the two fixtures last year. With rep football fast approaching, will also be Captain Paul Harrigan's first real chance to impress, starting a match for the first time this season. Last month, Wayne Russell had his first spill in a sprint car, but last night he was involved in one of the most remarkable accidents seen at the Motodrome in 20 years. Russell's car was left suspended in the safety netting, averting a disaster. Neither driver was injured, although it looked like that could change after the crash, with a heated verbal exchange between the two. Action continues at the Motodrome tonight with the Super Sedan Grand Prix Final. The Chief has been struggling with a groin injury this week, but moved freely at training this morning. After consulting coach Mal Riley, Harrigan was cleared to make his first run on appearance of the season. I'll be right to start and um, you know, looking forward to uh, some getting, getting some fitness up and to, uh, getting back to normal. It should only take me two or three weeks. Andrew Johns also struggling with a continuing groin complaint, will play and handle the goal kicking duties despite the niggling injury. 150 riders took to the unfamiliar surroundings of Kuragang Island today. It was the first round of the state motocross championships, which were continuing late this afternoon. Meantime, Newcastle's Boyd Kondrick has won the Red Rock Corindai Quadrathon near Coffs Harbour. The event is a triathlon with the added discipline of paddling, Kondrick taking 14 minutes off the previous record. And in bowls, Gil Steinhardt and Gary Willis will contest the final of the Hub of the Hunter tomorrow after winning their respective semis today. After watching the sprint cars fly through the air a night earlier, the super sedans were a little more subdued last night. The 50-lap event had plenty of leaders, several succumbing to mechanical problems, including Graham Lilford, who lost a wheel in the second half of the race. Maitland Stu Robinson took up the running and held on to beat John Brown and Lismore's Tanya Peacock. It was Falcon v Commodore in the Street Stock Sedan Championship. Lismore's David Wilson down defending champion Kevin Hopwood, while Paul Youngbury came from 20th on the grid to steal third. It may not have won any battles or beauty prizes, but it's forged its own unique place in Australian maritime history. We built a Newcastle by uh, Breddon Shipyard in 1954, and, uh, and then it served the Tea Gardens uh, 
Hawks Nest uh, community for many, many years until it's, uh, it's uh, coming up here when the Singing Bridge opened there. For the past two decades, it's been operating near Bulladeela, ferrying cars and passengers from Bombard Point to Legs Camp and back again. But its rotted hull has had enough, with the grand old lady of Miles Shores to make its last trip this week. But it won't be forgotten by the thousands of passengers who've made the minute-long trip into yesteryear. It's really sad actually because they hold a lot of, it holds a lot of memories. Our children have been using it just to walk on and go over the other side for over 18 years. Oh yes, we've seen some people try and catch the ferry when, after the ferry had already left and <laughs> uh, yeah, cars don't run on water. It was one of the last car ferries operating in Australia. It'll be replaced by a newer version within the next four months. Until then, a passenger ferry will operate, but drivers will have to take alternative routes. There could also be a change of tack for this legend of the lake. There's not many left. Um, I believe that uh, there have been moves to uh, maybe send it to the Sydney Maritime uh, Museum, and I think that would be a very good move because uh, especially children of generations to come would not know what a car ferry would look like. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. Kane Reynold was flown from Morissette to John Hunter Hospital this afternoon, suffering serious burns to his face and arms. Watching him leave was his friend Jason Kilday. The two had been working for Jason's father in the backyard of his Macquarie Street house. They doused the inside of an above-ground pool with fuel to kill the grass which was overrunning it. But as Jason and his father Stephen turned away, Kane pulled out a cigarette lighter and lit the grass. The result was disastrous. There was a big gush of um, like a flame and heat and like I dove and then I got up and looked and my mate was like, just, like had skin hanging off. Jason and his father poured water continuously on Kane until an ambulance arrived. Kane is tonight in intensive care in a satisfactory condition. A highlight today for New South Wales Police in what's been a very dark year for the service. These 21 officers represent policing at its most heroic. With their families watching on, they were presented with Commissioner's Commendations for Courage. Among those receiving awards were Senior Constables Michael Sorby, Troy Dominish and Peter Mann. In July last year, they arrested an irate man who had stabbed to death a woman in a house in Jesmond. When we first went in, he was, um, he come out myself and Troy with a um, with a, a, a knife. Um, I requested him to put the knife down with my pistol drawn. He refused. Um, I tackled him, and Troy and Michael assisted me in arresting him. Senior Constable Anthony Vandervliet also received a commendation for stopping a man at Hamilton in September 1994 who tried to stab several people. And from the North Coast, a bravery award for Detective Senior Constable Stephen Collins. He was forced to shoot a man twice who attacked him with a hunting knife at a Kempsey Hotel in 1993. It's certainly an incident that I don't want to happen again, and, uh, but as I said, I'm very honoured with the award. 
And there are those officers who rescued people. Sergeant Bruce Alderton and Senior Constable Gordon Hamilton saved a man trapped in a car in a flooded river near Cessnock. And Senior Constable William Priest risked his life to try to save a man after a boat overturned at Brunswick Heads. Picturesque boat harbour at Port Stephens was once a well-kept secret, but that's all changed. Three different residential subdivisions have been approved in as many years and a fourth is now being considered by council. The latest, proposed by Lancom, would see a staggered release of 77 blocks of land. It's going to make it very difficult for people to, to live out there and enjoy the, the natural bushland and, uh, and the uh, national park at Boat Harbour. Residents are concerned about the overdevelopment of the area. Well, because of the size and the uh, geography of the area of Boat Harbour, where everything drains down onto the beach, we feel that it's a gross overdevelopment of this area. Some residents hope the Landcom land will be returned to National Park. It's such a vital area for the uh, flora and fauna. In the meantime, the 47 apartment block fronting Boat Harbour Beach will go ahead. Jane Anderson, NBN News. absolutely don't need but The fire engulfed the building just after midnight the Maitland Road hall a mass of flames and smoke The roof was one of the first things to go the flames leapt high into the night sky, the spectacular sight drawing neighbours onto the street. The fire brigade arrived just minutes later, fire crews battling searing heat and plumes of smoke in an attempt to contain the blaze. Hoses were directed at a neighbouring house to stop the fire spreading to it. By daylight, only the gutted shell of the hall remained. Scouts began the difficult task of sifting through the ashes and cleaning up the mess. The hall was full of camping gear, along with canoeing and abseiling equipment. Early estimates put the damage bill at hundreds of thousands of dollars. Pretty devastating. Police are still investigating the cause of the blaze and believe it may have been deliberately lit. No one was injured in the fire, the second involving Scout property in the past few weeks. Late last month, Newcastle Scout and Adventure Centre was badly damaged in an arson attack. Emma Siossian, NBN News.
Following Heather Radbury. There's a new breed of tourist officer out on Newcastle streets pushing the pick spots in the city. This is the carry hole coming up, James. Look at those ships out to sea waiting to get into the port. Taxi drivers and hotel receptionists are just two groups targeted to get the message across. First impressions are lasting impressions and very often the people who meet visitors to Newcastle don't have a really good knowledge of Newcastle. Through the We Know Newcastle program, participants are being taught the best places to visit, the city's heritage and transport links. They just need a little bit more information to say, uh, to be able to talk authoritatively about it and put people on the right track. Newcastle already attracts more than half a million tourists each year. Every extra visitor generates more good news for the local economy. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Newcastle Council is calling on its ratepayers to go a little bit green. The mulcher machine is available to people within the council area free of charge. The plan is to cut down on the dumping of prunings in parks and reserves, which encourages weeds and a risk of fire. Maybe they think in a way that they're doing the right thing by giving their reserve, local reserve, um, a few prunings and a few grass clippings. Once the prunings are mulched, they can be put back into the garden, giving the soil a good boost. The mulcher can be transported easily on the back of the family car. Welcome to Heritage Month in Maitland! In full fancy dress, town crier Evan Haswell launched the beginning of Maitland's Month of Heritage. With more than 30 events taking place, this year promises to be Maitland's best yet. Most who attended the launch were happy to get into the swing of things, others content to just look on. The Maitland Heritage Walk for the Eastern Precinct was also launched this morning. Twelve months in the making, it winds past 28 of Maitland's key landmarks. With so many grand homes in the area, choosing the route was a difficult task. We did many a practice walk around and around and chopped and changed things probably 100 times. At a leisurely pace, the Maitland Heritage Walk takes around two hours and includes historical sites such as this former inn. The walk has also been adapted for children. A shorter version features 12 of the attractions. Students from Maitland and East Maitland Public Schools provided a helping hand, supplying the artwork for an accompanying activity book. Organisers claim the walk is a great educational experience. They believe it will encourage children to discover Maitland's heritage.
The wildfires were in a buoyant mood last night, less than 48 hours from adding to the club's brief but expanding history. Everybody within the club is looking forward to it. I mean, it's an opportunity to uh, win our first final. Newcastle has named much the same side to play Sydney Uni to the one that beat Melbourne last weekend to qualify for the final. The students will play a similar style of game to the wildfires, but Newcastle remains confident it can return with a $4,000 winner's purse, the first in the club's history. The Colts and under-19s premiership start this weekend, with the arrival of three international players well timed for the start of the grade competition next weekend. The Fijian contingent should be here very early next week. Um, and that'll give us a couple of second rowers and another prop. And that, that should uh, add some uh, oomph to the club and, and there's a bit of excitement about it too. Grave fears had been held for Graham Charles Robert Shaw, reported missing by his family. This morning those fears were realised. His body was found in bushland near Barnsley. About 7.45am this morning, a uh, police search party uh, conducted a search of this uh, stretch of roadway here and a body has been located in some uh, bush at the side of the road. For two days, police searched the area using trail bikes and a helicopter. The 33-year-old from Adamstown was last seen drinking at the Duke of Wellington Hotel at Lambton in Newcastle on Wednesday. The following morning, Robert Shaw's family reported him missing. A 23-year-old man from Wanji Wanji has been charged with manslaughter and unlawful disposal of a body. Police allege the man had been in possession of the car belonging to Robert Shaw. This morning the man appeared in Newcastle local court. Bail was refused. He will reappear at Wald's End local court on Monday morning. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News. It's been three decades in the planning, three years of intensive fundraising and thousands of lamingtons later, Nora Head Search and Rescue Base finally christened its newest member. Understandably, the arrival of the locally built Mexicat was cause for celebration. So I'd say it's the most important day we've had in the history of this club. The Tukli RSL Pipe Band, SES, Police, Volunteer Coast Guards and the community turned out to welcome the vessel. It was an emotional occasion, members overwhelmed by the support shown by the community. I'd say half the money that that boat cost has come from the shoppers in Tukli, Lakehaven, Wyong Plaza and Westfield. Uh, they've been unbelievable. For 30 years the club has had to hire a privately owned boat for its rescue missions. With the arrival of the Maxi Cat, a crew of two can be in the water within minutes. With the nearest rescue boats based in Terrigal and Swansea, club members believe the boat will be indispensable. And clearly many of those who live on the water agree. Uh, to see the people come out today just to look at this boat, it's, it's uh, unbelievable really. It's, uh, it puts a lump in our throat to think that so many people are with us. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News. Gary Harley's pick counts Shivers returning 320 and 160, the Bandit second, Boart third, with Wyong's old spiritual star a brave fourth. And the Freedmans only had to wait till the all-age stakes to make it 13 Group 1 wins for the season. Flying Spur returned four even for the win, but the victory was soured after million dollar stakes winner March Hare broke down during the race and had to be put down. Last week it was the Colts' turn, today the Phillies in an open AJC Australian Oaks over 2400 metres.
Followers of Gary Harley again rewarded in a big way with Ken Bell returning over $15 for the win and $3 for the place. The proposed development at Penny Beach will see up to 4,000 houses built in the area. Our concerns are that the, the proposed development um, is going to deleteriously affect the endangered species that live at Penny Beach. The Coalition believes Lake Macquarie Council is keeping quiet about an environmental report commissioned last year. It allegedly reveals that native owls, bats and gliders are just some of the rare species living in the area. Although the community has been invited to comment on the proposed development for some time now, Mr Drinkwater is critical of the fact that the results of the report are only now being made available to the public. The report confirms that there are nine endangered species living at Penny Beach with another three or four species actually that are endangered that do visit the area on their migratory um, patterns. He believes council officers have withheld the information deliberately, a claim that Lake Macquarie Mayor John Kilpatrick strongly denies. The 24-12 loss to the Tigers ranked as one of the most disappointing Newcastle performances in the last year and following the post-mortem there were no excuses. It's the worst exhibition the first half that I've been involved with. The Knights didn't take advantage of a 14-2 penalty count and failed to carry out basic fundamentals. But the coach isn't likely to announce too many changes tomorrow when he names the team to play Penrith. They're the best players uh, that's available, I can assure you on that. And I've got to be patient and uh, maybe we've just got to come through this, this um, encounter together. He will need to find a replacement for Jamie Ainscoe. The representative centre was hobbling on an injured left ankle today and we'll find out the extent of the damage tomorrow. So it might be a couple of weeks, but uh, just have to wait and see. Yeah. His absence could open the way for Brad Godden to return to first grade, while winger Darren Albert also received attention on his left hand but is expected to be fit for Sunday. It's just a small ligament problem, but nothing major. After his short but well-documented test career, Merrick was the first player chosen for country despite missing a selection trial in Musselbrook on Saturday. The Singleton half will be involved in a busy representative season which starts against Victoria on May 5. In racing, the Max Lee's trained potential star has finished out of the money in the $750,000 Queen Elizabeth Cup in Hong Kong. Ridden by Wayne Harris, it finished eighth, with fewer chosen running third. In surf life-saving, Nobbies has won its fourth successive Limberry IRB Carnival on the south coast. Nobbies won eight of ten events and will start as one of the favourites for the Australian titles in Victoria in two weeks. And there was also success for local Adam Clark at the Motodrome over the weekend. He took out the feature speed car event from Craig Brady and Darren Jenkins. In the super sedan Stars Dash, John Brown broke the six lap track record, while Stu Robinson won the Castrol 20 lap final. Finally, the Australian Canoe Federation has knocked back an appeal from Lake Macquarie's Shane Shushka regarding his non-selection for the Atlanta Olympics.